Welcome to the Triple P Podcast, Preds, Pucks, Pinoys, hosted by Justin Bradford and Matt Best. Hello and welcome to another episode of Triple P, Preds, Pucks, and Pinoys. Good thing we have pop filters and everybody just turned off the radio. Who says radio anymore, too? The radio. Hey, I'm on the radio. No, I mean, like, who says that as their first, like, thing that comes to mind when you listen to things, like podcasts? Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. 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 Well, anyways, Justin Bradford, Matt Best. Uh, I got my first haircut since September 24th. I but... saw that. You had, like, locks. I had the fro when I was Usually when out. you do your before and after, like, it's pretty drastic. Like, your hair you is can, pretty yeah. long, but that was uh, a rat's nest that was on your head. <laughs> The curls get really thick, and so you don't realize how long it is until you, like, pull that out. And you are an odd specimen because not many Asians, half or full, get curly hair. You're right. I mean, I got my curly hair from my dad, who was bald. So what does that mean for you? I will not be—I would have been loot having a thinning hairline by now. My hair is thick. Are you— I'm good. Are you confident? I'm 100% confident. Do you think you'll ever be bald in your life? Only if I choose to be. You don't think, like, by the age of 65, you'll be bald? No, I'm sure I'll be thinning hair like most people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naturally. But no, I would have already been showing. I'm almost 40. I'd be showing signs by now. I'm pretty screwed. I I don't uh, even have a receding hairline. My dad's hair is pretty spotty, so uh, I'm going to get that when I'm older. I thought the old wives' tale, though, is that it's supposed to be based on your mom's father. I'm even more screwed. He was bald. Well, I guess you better let your hair breathe to stop wearing so many ball caps. <laughs> Look at it. You're not actually wearing a ball cap this time. No, it was my dad's birthday today, so we went out for dinner, and I had well, to... happy birthday to, to your dad. He will appreciate that. But yeah, I had to yeah, get awesome. dressed up and go out for dinner. So, yeah, no, I think uh, this is one Ugh, of the rare So you had occasions. to leave. You had to leave the cave. I did, for once. Usually, yeah. I don't like. I don't go out much anymore. Like, pre-pandemic, I'd go to the bar. I'd go do all this fun stuff. Now it's like, do I have to go out? Can I stay in? Yeah. I mean, that's fair. I think it's one of those things the the majority of the pandemic was uh, an introvert's uh, wet dream. Yeah. And then it turned extroverts like me into like, so this is what it's like. Yeah. It's kind of nice. <laughs> But I mean, it's one of those things too. You still, you could have, you could be more picky and choosy about your social time. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I great. love my me time now, but mm-hmm. I also realize that I need to go out and do things and like see more than the same three people. Okay. That's, that's totally fair and understandable. Uh, so speaking of seeing more than the same three people, well, the predators have a string of playing lots of Eastern conference opponents here of late. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what, what a, what a segue, huh? That's yeah, it was pretty good. I'm proud of you. So, I mean, you start off with Columbus back on November 30th, and then a string of Eastern Conference opponents all the way until December 14th when they meet Calgary at home. Like, that's a, that's a lot of the same conference. I mean, Boston comes came to town, uh, Montreal came to town, then they're in Detroit, New York Islanders, New Jersey Devils, New York Rangers. It's that, that New York area swing coming up after they play in Detroit on Tuesday night. So it's we, uh, uh, interesting. We said pre-show that there wouldn't be a ton of hockey talk, but for this week coming up yeah. against the Red Wings, the Islanders, and the Devils, you got to think they win two out of three here, right? I would think so. I mean, with the way this team's playing, they can be a little streaky, uh, but the Red Wings, are they're not a bad team right now. No, I mean, the, that's the one game. Three, that's the one, right? That's the one where it's like, I'd understand. You run into just a young team full of piss and vinegar that's all happy. It does kind of worry me a tiny, tiny bit that over the last two games for the Preds, specifically against the Canadians, you shouldn't be going to overtime against them. Uh, Getting shut out by Boston, I understand that completely, but you should be able to muster up a goal because that team is not the scary big bad Bruins that they have been in years past. They're pretty far removed from it. They're still a good team. But a 2 nothing shutout to them a few years ago holds much more weight than a 2 nothing shutout now. Yeah, but uh, now here's the thing, too. And, I mean, we can really dive deep into it, which we're not going to. The overall played pretty well against Boston. I mean, we yeah. looked at where the shots were taken from and everything. Saros played really well. Dude, they just couldn't They just couldn't get one. And that's one of those things with a young team. And that's why I even asked head coach John Hines that when a team plays well overall, 
how do you work with the mental toughness and everything to get past that? And how do you not let people get down on themselves, especially young players? Mm -hmm. It's, I don't want to say easy, but there can be that demotivation factor of, well, we tried everything. We couldn't get anything through. And this is not saying that they're going to speak outward about this. It's going to be in the back of their heads of the snake bittenness is when you put up 42 shots and nine of them come from Roman Yossi. Right, and then you can't muster one goal. Yeah, the goaltender was play- Swayman played really well that game, but overall the shots were there were some decent quality shots too. It wasn't like they were all perimeter shots either. There were some good high danger opportunities. I mean, I think they matched Boston's high danger opportunities in the game at nine. I'm trying to recall that was a while ago, so try to remember what it was. But even then, it's not like when you look at the heat map, they were all bad opportunities. It's just they played well, but Boston did better, and Boston's goalie played even better than that. So well, for that's, the- that's going to be interesting too to see how a team can respond to those types of things like you said montreal a bad team right yeah. now but they had to go to overtime against them to get the win forsberg that's the positive thing too but it's those learning experiences too that they can take with them going forward they uh they took my advice that i cried about on the last podcast and i just said <laughs> please shoot the puck they have 86 shots over the last two games how about that that is shooting the puck that is what you want to see continue <laughs> um it's against the the 40 plus shots against boston was surprising the 40 plus shots against the canadians Not so surprising. Uh, If they can keep it above 32-33 each night for this whole week, that would be good to see. The Islanders' Mm -hmm. goalies are just not as good as they have been in years past, but I would never count out Sorokin or Varley. Just What is up with the Islanders? What's up with them? Is it just COVID? (sighs) The lazy answer is COVID. The better answer is they're not as resilient as they've been touted out to be because this Islanders team has always been like they're a system team. They just run the same system and it works with anybody. Now you're seeing that whole, yeah, it doesn't really work with anybody that you throw in there. You need your guys to perform like Anders Lee, not playing the way Anders Lee can play is hurting them in a big way. Matt Barzal not being like the ultimate superstar is hurting them too. I mean, he has 13 points in 20 games this year. Mm-hmm. You kind of expect more from Matt Barzal. You kind of expect him to take that next step. I mean, last year he was under a point per game. 2020, 2019 season under a point per game. That 2017, 18 season though still lingers where he was just a man on fire. I think Matt Barzell is a 70 point player when it's all said and done. It's just these Islanders need him to be an 85 point player right now with what's going on with their roster. And when you look at it, I know it's really early. It's only a quarter of the way into the season. And granted, the Islanders are going to have a slew of home games Mm -hmm. to flow because they started out on the road so much. They're going to have a lot of home games to close out the season and everything. But it starts to get to the point to where, yes, even though they're only 12 points back of a wild card spot, you start digging yourself a hole that there's almost... I don't say it's not mathematically impossible, but it's almost mentally impossible, physically impossible to overcome overcome that much of a hole that you're digging yourselves into. No matter how good of a team you are, you still want to be competitive uh, enough to where you're not 073 in your last 10. It's one thing to be a little streaky and be like four, five, and one, you know, not that good, but 073, that's rough. I don't even think it's streaky. I think it's just their offense is putrid this year. I'll, I'll give you a number here and you tell me if it's over or under. Do you think the Islanders have four or more or four or less players with 10 or more points? I mean, I will not lie that I looked earlier today and it's definitely less. Yeah, it's two. It's Barzal with 13 and Brock Nelson with 11. That's awful. That's not like when you have Anders Lee, who is just a goal scorer. When you have Josh Bailey, Kyle Kyle Palmieri, uh, people thought Oliver Wallstrom would take his next step. He's really good at putting the puck in the back of the net and that's about it. Um, You'd hope that he'd get some people with at least 10 points through 20 games by now, Mm. but that's just not happening. That's one of these cases where you can look at the stats and go, yeah, it's cut and dry. Anders Lee, four goals. That's not helping your cause whatsoever. Four goals, four points, so it's not like he's contributing elsewhere. Um, It it just feels like Matt Barzell's on an island. I'm not trying to make a pun there. All by himself, trying to get this team going. And Sorokin and Varlamov have been pedestrian i guess is the best way to put it varley's been bad not pedestrian sorokin's been good bad but varley's been like not 1a 1b quality he's been like Mm -hmm. michael hutchinson quality okay so let's go ahead and get into some things yes first of all because we didn't get it we we had to we briefly touched on it and then it got revealed your thoughts on the stadium series jersey mr best 
<laughs> oh, oh man. <laughs> so Almost. you and I had a conversation oh, about this too that like on our Twitter profiles and even here on the podcast, we can't really poo poo shit on them as much as if we wanted to, we could. Uh, because there's relationships they'll hold, et cetera, et cetera. But I will say they're terrible. They're not, they're not good. Um, the Smashville font is one of the funniest things I have ever seen. Like, that's just bad. If you thought writing Jersey in cursive was bad on, on a Jersey, the Smashville font, like with one letter being bigger than the other and things like that, it's not good. I don't really like the guitar pick logo to be like the primary, you and I talked about this, put it on a shoulder. That's cool. We like that. But in this case, just make that mother effort bigger on the center of the jersey. Get rid of Smashville. Add some gold piping. Go with the navy blue. And then that's fine. That's how you fix this jersey. Um, you won't catch me ever spending a dime on any Stadium Series merch. When we go to the game, I'll maybe buy a pin or a puck, but I will not buy any clothes. The logo for the game is good. Yeah, but the jerseys, like... Right, the happening? logo for the game. I like the logo for the game. Like I... That's good. Now, so he, here's the thing for me. They explain it. You know, they want to do hat show print for it, which is, you know, pretty iconic here in Nashville with all the different posters for concerts and events and everything, too. And they've done plenty for Predators games, especially during the playoffs and stuff. That's, that's nice and all. <laughs> when you have to take more time to explain what you did instead of it making sense right off the bat then you failed at your job yeah that's the thing for me i know jim chandler said it and i've said it to other people too when you have to over explain what you did and it's not obvious what you did to try to make people have that oh oh i see it moment yeah it's you, you didn't do it right it should just be self it should be self explained it's a jersey you should not have to over explain what you did to make people understand it to realize oh yeah that's kind of cool understand what you're trying to do good idea bad execution i'm gonna read off as i quote retweeted and i said if you had to choose and i put <laughs> up the nashville jersey and the new jersey devils jersey and i'll read you just a few responses one naked i choose naked naked death courtesy of our friend cat uh number two hey cat. uh i'd sooner <laughs> buy the jersey jersey for every single person i shop for at christmas than gift a single one of them smashville from scott wheeler of the athletic so uh he's not a big fan of it either um and then sean warren just comes out and says honestly the varying thickness in the smashville letters irks me so much i'll take jersey and then another few fun ones no uh, is there a reset button? Skins. Jersey, it's not close. It's just, it's not a good jersey. And I, I saw a lot of people joke about this, too. At least Preds fans can agree on something this year. No, Now, granted, there are there are folks that like it, and that's great. That's I'm cool. I'm glad that, that you enjoy it and everything. I don't think anyone's going to bag on you for liking it. I, I just want to hear by, by why. Sheer numbers, by sheer numbers, it's never going to be 100% of people love or hate something it's never going to be that somebody's gonna be like that's cool i get mm -hmm. it i like the concept it's just overall when when it's like this there's so many little things like they're they, they're on the right path with going navy people wanted that the tease was hype but man the tease was so hype how <laughs> in the hell do you get a group of let's say 10 people together in a room and they all see that font and go this works like how does like not two people say something or three people. I mean, we weren't in the room, but it just feels like it's common sense to not like the Smashville because the E just screams at you at the end. Well, and and what and I know it's half show, but the S's. Yeah, it's the third S. And again, I understand it's supposed to be half this... show print, but when they're gonna have to over explain this on TV and everything, so it is not good. No, this <laughs> looks like when you order a jersey illegally from a different country and it comes in and you're like, This doesn't look like the picture. This isn't what it is. Ah, oh, some of the letters are bigger than one or the other. That's what it's like ordering a bootleg jersey sometimes. <laughs> so this to me, and it's just cluing it now looks like a bootleg jersey and if anyone's ever ordered one online go look oh at the one god. you ordered go look at the smashville jersey oh my god they're the same you're actually so right it's right like, it's it's the off color blue on the numbering the cold jerseys uneven spacing 
where where like the nameplate is off is off center or but the big thing is with the numbers being blue and it's the wrong color blue people are like i can't spot the difference like uh like i what? wear fake hockey jerseys when i go play pond hockey i won't ever wear a real one i'll put on my winter coat and i'll put on a fake one or i'll put on like a very old real one that i have i wouldn't even wear this doing that it's not a good jersey it's uh it's a you tried here's a gold star for you kind of thing mm-hmm. it's just there's a swing and a miss is the nicest way to put it yeah all right so <laughs> where do we go from there okay we did have plenty of questions come in so let's go to the most important one right now which is from Andrew. Why are you like you are? <laughs> okay, so he he. I, Reed, I hate you. Um, I've known Reed for a long time. He's full newfie. I love him lots. But he sent me my own treat t- tweet like in my DM, and I was like, if you tweet it, we'll answer it. And then I was like, I'll bring it up at the very end because I love Reed, and I didn't know you were gonna lead off with that. And I wish I knew why I was the way I am. We'd I don't know, but your hair looks good. Thank so. you. So does yours. Look at us. Fresh cuts on the pod today. An audio yeah. podcast. In our in our Filipino ways. Yes. I did when I put we put up all the Christmas decorations pretty much all up. I got my puddle hanging up in the window. Nice. As well. Have another little one to hang in the living room. So I have two puddles. Are you parties. done Christmas decorating? Yeah, I might do a little bit more, but for the most part, all done. Got the village set up. Um, if folks, if you haven't seen it yet, I tweeted out my my geek tree. Yeah, with all the different ornaments that has Star Wars, Marvel, Disney, Harry Potter, peanuts, uh, plenty of different things on there. So I'm very proud of that that tree. Did you put up lights outside? Yes. Yeah. Once. <laughs> so Alex is actually going to a wreath making event. Oh, that's cool. Uh, tomorrow, and it's like part of her job. Like it's part of her job. It's like she's being hosted there as this at this event. So I'm going to get a picture and some video of the lights once that wreath is set because right now we have a, a temporary we have an interim wreath. Nice. We have a Mike Yo wreath that's uh, <laughs> uh, hanging on the front door. <laughs> um, also, while we're on the topic of Christmas, before we dive deeper into the mailbag, how was the Muppets concert, dude? Because okay, okay so one, a little disappointed in you, slightly. What? Uh, you tweeted out a picture that day of you wearing a holiday cheers like Muppets get up that sweater, right. and I was like. Oh my god, he's going to wear that out to the show tonight. It's incredible. And then I scroll through your timeline, I see you looking snazzy in a suit, and I was like, yeah, whatever. It's like <laughs> Because Alex wanted to wear her green dress, and I was not going to wear a sweatshirt <laughs> Why? my fiancé wore a dress. Why? All the because attention... Didn't want to. But then all the attention goes to her, as it should, and then you're just No, there. it would come to me, because it looked like the douchebag wearing <laughs> Who's a sweatshirt. Who's the asshole wearing a sweater? Exactly. Yeah, Who's but... the asshole? Me. <laughs> It looks so good. It's such a nice vintage I, Well, sweater. that's why I wore it, though. That's why I wore it. It's like because it, it went to work. I was on Zoom calls with that. <laughs> I think that day, too, I looked at your hair and went, he needs a haircut. Yeah, yeah, definitely <laughs> did. But it was fantastic. It was actually, I did not realize this going in. I should have since I used to work there, that it was actually the North American premiere of the Muppet Christmas Carol in concert. Oh, nice. It was a premiered in London uh, this year. And this is the North American premiere of it. And this is this is what I'll say for those of you that have never been to a, con- a, a movie in concert. So even if you're not in Nashville, the, these things tour all across North America and the world. So whether it's like Star Wars or Harry Potter, Back to the Future is coming to Nashville, Toy Story is coming to Nashville. They were going to do Ghostbusters. That might come back. There's probably going to be Marvel ones in the near future. They play everything. Everything. So even the... Walt Disney Pictures, you know, the beginning of yeah, da, yeah. Da, 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 with they the play twinkles that. and all that. Yeah, yes. yeah. They play the intro themes. They play the full credits. Is they it play everything. The same length as the movie or is it extended somehow? No, it's, yeah, it's the same length. Oh. So what it is, is a, a the production company strips the score from the movie and wow. the orchestra plays the entire thing live to a T. Like they have what's called a click tracker in their ear that keeps everything to the right beat. The conductor has to make sure everything is right. And that's what they do in rehearsals that he has a little screen that is tracking exactly where the orchestra is supposed to be at certain times. So you don't get too far ahead or too far back. You have to be right on the moment. That looks pretty cool. Because movies, right? Yeah, yeah. Things have to hit at the right moment. Like if there's an action sequence or something like that, it has to hit at the right moment or it's ruined. No. So yeah. that's the great thing. And the, through the whole credits, as well, they play the whole credits and everything. It's it's so awesome to experience this. And 
they included the love is gone which is that lost song that was cut out of the release to home video that i don't know that theatrical song. release it's it's a it is an original piece of the movie where scrooge's fiance is basically breaking up with him in an fu way nice where it's like he's like i love you she's like you used to and mm. it goes into a song about the love is gone but all the different ways that the love is gone it's like damn this is not for children like like <laughs> n- not in terms of like it's bad or raunchy but it's so deep like it is a deep cut it's like an adele song mm. <laughs> is what she's singing adele's new album slaps by the way yeah, yeah but it's very like an adele good. song in a muppet movie <laughs> it looked like fun it looked like you had a very good time because i know how it's much like live music especially like orchestras and classic music and all that means to you so i'm glad you had a good time Thank you, especially with the Muppets, man. Yeah, Muppet, like, I, everyone likes the Muppets, and if you don't, yeah. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> That's the F-bomb you choose with. Yeah, okay. well, <laughs> I almost blew it earlier. I just, <laughs> I like the Muppets. The Muppets can stay. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into our mailbag here, and I'm sure other things will, will pop up. Uh, coming from Kyle, good friend Kyle. Hmm. What's, oh wait, actually, let's go to this first question. Has uh, Best of Matt ordered his Harper Stadium Series jersey yet? Kyle, you know damn well what jersey I'm getting. I will not be getting a Stadium Series jersey. And if I did, honestly, it would probably be Ben Harper. I'm not even kidding. Just because ugly jersey, bad player kind of go hand in hand. Okie dokie. On to the actual (laughs) question. What's your favorite hockey food? I'm assuming this is something you get at a game. Okay, I was going to ask you to go first so you can narrow down like the rules of what hockey food is like something mm-hmm. you get at an arena i guess is what we're going with yeah I'm, I'm assuming that and i mean for me this is just something i enjoy at sporting events and i know it gets a little messy but i enjoy barbecue nachos Ooh, i like specialty nachos from different places because different ballparks so. do it different hockey like oh, arenas yeah. do it differently um when i worked for the jays there was always this one food section that would just rotate out new foods all the time and they would have like different kinds of nachos all the time like thai nachos jerk chicken nachos and so i was like yeah give me all that uh but for hockey food give me a slice of greasy pizza from like the local vendor that's there because if you go to detroit you'll get like little caesars like made right there um the leafs you get pizza pizza but it's like 17 times better than actual pizza pizza because i refuse to order pizza pizza here in canada it's kind of shitty but i love greasy arena pizza what we have hunt brothers we have gas station pizza yeah and don't you all come at me with but it's actually pretty good shut up Ugh. no it is gas station pizza and no is it actually no. gas station pizza or are you just calling a gas station pizza no, it's gas station pizza that's where you find hunt brothers is in gas stations and i'm not trying to bag on gas station pizza but I would want something a little bit higher quality. Yeah, but gas station pizza is good for a certain demographic, which is glug, glug, glug. I've had a lot of drinks. Uh, but still, you need a. The sauce is okay, actually, but the crust is so flimsy and floppy. I don't want that. I want is a, it, uh, it's so doughy. Okay, so doughy. pizza pizza outside of the Scotiabank Arena sucks. It feels like you're eating cardboard. You go into the arena and have the pizza pizza there, and it's like, why can't I have this all the time? No, it's, have, Hunt Brothers, no. it's the same, like both places. I'm never, I'm, ne- I'm Hunt Brothers will never sponsor me. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. It never, it's never gonna happen. Is it like what's and, wrong and, with and it? You, what's wrong with see it? Me, it doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste like. It doesn't make me feel like you know what? I want to grab a slice of pizza. I only eat it because it's free as a media member and I'm hungry. <laughs> oh my god. You're, I'm not trying to make fun of you, but, like, you're not one to turn down food because, like, you just, like, eating, and I don't mean that as a rude slight. I just mean that as well, in, that, like, if you don't like something things, that tastes good, then, Of yeah. all the different things, that they, of all the different pizza companies they could have, but Hunt Brothers is based in Nashville. Is it, like, does it have a rep around town of being, can you, can I order it? With my phone or call and like people can you can order it and, and have a specialty made at the gas station yes oh my god so it legitimately is gas station pizza like it is there's I'm no like lying. standalone store it is gas station pizza no it's gas station pizza it's partnered with gas stations that's disgusting well it's not gas station food it's can, not disgusting gas station food like can it. be good but yeah by the it's way not, you're and i won't say it's it. disgusting i'm not trying to bag it like that it's just like i don't that is not the pizza that i want i just feel like having a pizza oven in a gas station is not something that people are prioritizing 
<laughs> so the pizza oven probably sucks and everything probably sucks to make it because that shit's expensive. Whereas you want a hot dog, you get one of those hot dog rolling machines at a gas uh-huh. station and they're fine. With the tornadoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you those know, are yeah. fine. Drunk me orders that from 7-Eleven all the time. So um, Alex orders those too. They're pretty good. They're not good for your stomach, but really good. Oh, yeah. But I, of all the things, I'm just rattling off Jets, which is probably difficult to pull off because it's deep dish, Detroit style. You have Domino's, Papa John's, Pizza Hut, all the major chains. Just that yank you one of those with. major ones in there. Right? Even Little Caesars. I'll take Little Man, Caesars. Little Caesars in an arena slaps, and I'll hear no argument. Yes. But not Hunt Brothers. Get that shit out of my face. Nothing makes me happier than going to Detroit, going to Comerica Park, and ordering a <laughs> personal Little Caesars oh, pizza for myself, and then have the hot dog guy come with his bucket of hot wieners, and then get one from him while I'm eating my pizza in my chair with my two beers that cost me 12 bucks. Like, now here, okay. It's great. Here's, a, here's a redeeming factor for Hunt Brothers. You want the redeeming factor? Cheap. No. Their breakfast pizza is good. Ew. Ew. What's on a breakfast pizza? Eggs? Eggs, sausage, and cheese. There's some things that shouldn't just be breakfastized. And then they, and with with gravy. A little bit of gravy on there. (laughs) Why? Okay, dough is dough. Yeah. It's like bread. Bread and gravy. Then eggs, sausage, and cheese. There is nothing weird about it. It's just served at breakfast time. What kind of sauce is there? No, there's no. The gravy is the sauce. This is disgusting. It's not disgusting. <laughs> it is disgusting. It's the it's the same breakfast element. It's just in the shape of a pizza. If you put that into a biscuit, it's, yeah, but then a you're biscuit like, oh, that's is good. accepted as a breakfast food. It's dough. It is cheap pizza. They're all the same. I Ugh, promise you. No, yeah, I I would have to be hammered and awake at six a.m. to have there, the breakfast pizza. There's. The only time I get to have it usually is when I'm at the rink. And you only time. choose the breakfast pizza. Well, what else? There's no other breakfast foods available at that time Skip at the rink. Skip it. No. Oh. It's actually pretty. That's the only redeeming factor. I'm going on a long shot here to give him a redeeming factor. Okay, let me have that. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, who is the better? This is from John. Who is the better bounty hunter? Uh, Mando or Semus Aran? Ooh. Ooh, that's tough. Uh, I'm going to pick Mando. Mando just has that badass, like, redeeming quality to him. Plus, I've also been more privy to more Mando in mainstream media lately than Samus. Yeah. I feel yeah. as if, if Samus had all of the attention that Mando had in mainstream media, then maybe they could have created a badass version of him. But... Just her. because of me, her, her, uh, I'll go, I'll go Mando here. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm going to go with Mando as well because I'm more familiar with that. So I will apologize, John, they're not as familiar. I played the game, but that was a long, mm-hmm. long time ago when, and when I played, Sam, when I played Metroid. I used to use the shit out of her in Smash too, because <laughs> she was so like elusive <laughs> and did so much damage. Okay. Let's see. Uh, this is from Adam, and I don't. I think this is going to be to me because you haven't watched it yet. This is from Adam. Do you want Daredevil slash Kingpin to show up in Hawkeye? I'm just going to say yes and let you go with it because that just sounds cool to me. I haven't watched Hawkeye yet. So there's been a hint that possibly Kingpin was in Hawkeye in the, in the most recent episode. So I would I want to see Kingpin. I would rather save Daredevil for something else, or maybe he's at the very very end. But you're going to get too much going. We did get confirmation. Charlie Cox. Charlie Cox is Cox. going to be Daredevil going forward. Mm-hmm. But I'd love to see Kingpin show up because then you're adding a, a pretty good villain uh, there as well. So, yeah, I like that. Yeah, no, I I just want more Daredevil. I need to rewatch Daredevil, actually. Me too. Uh, here's one, and I want to put this on you just to see from an, more of an outsider's perspective because I know I've touched on a lot. This is from good friend Peyton. Why is Forsberg so streaky aside from the obvious contract year talking points? Supporting cast. It almost completely boils down to his supporting cast. Um, You look at some of the streakier players in the NHL and they all have one thing in common. They don't have 
pardon me, burp, they don't have consistent line mates throughout most of their tenure with the team. You look at players who have Philip Forsberg's skill set, and the first one of the first people that actually comes to mind is Dustin Brown early in his career. He got to chill with Anze Kopitar forever. They were line mates forever. And Brown had a great start to his career, and then his skill tailed off. Forsberg's skill hasn't tailed off yet. It's just, I feel like, too much in his career so far. It's been, all right, Phil, we need you to carry the line with this guy. Oh, well, that line's struggling. This player's struggling. Can you go be the spark plug for him? Uh, Phil Forsberg doesn't need to be the spark plug. He needs to be the key cog. He needs, like, his Robin to go and play with. Um, Mikel Granlund is finding a bunch of Robins this year, which is fantastic. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Phil needs just not a superstar to play with, just someone that gives him immense chemistry. Someone who actually comes to mind is Tyler Bozak really calmed down Phil Kessel early in Kessel's Leafs tenure, and then Kessel started scoring goals like a madman because it was always Phil, Bozy, and JVR. That was the first line, always. And boy, did that line carry that team through a lot of hard times. Give Phil consistent line mates for three quarters of the season. That's not an outlandish ask. Um, you look at a lot of the top teams in the NHL, the top players play with each other on each team. It, it works. And there's a reason why it works. Give Phil a buddy and let him play with him. Okay. No, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, this one comes from Silent Night, world champion Lee. What's your prediction for the biggest surprise slash reveal in No Way Home? Of course, we're talking about Spider-Man here, which is next week. It is. Am I seeing it before you? We, I'm seeing the 7 o'clock show on Thursday. Uh, is that the 16th? Yes. I'm seeing it at 7.30. Oh, boy. So we could talk after. I'm excited. Oh, no, we yes. should save it for an episode is what we, we should We should do. absolutely save it for an yes. episode. Yes. We'll figure that out. That maybe we record it pretty soon after so it's all fresh, but we don't release it immediately. Yes. We release it as an only Spider-Man episode for people so they don't get any confusion. With yes, like a half hour. Fair. I will literally title it Spider-Man No Way Home or whatever this one's called. <laughs> um, no spoilers. No spoil. Yeah, just. Well, well yes, spoilers. Yeah, yes, spoilers. yes, spoilers. Lots of spoilers. Spoiler so, warning. Throughout what the whole what thing. do you think? What's your prediction? Do you have any predictions? What, what you think is going to happen? I honestly don't, and I'm kind of happy I don't because I want to go into it with an open mind, not to just not be disappointed or anything like that, but I don't want to be like, oh, I was so right, or oh, I'm disappointed that what I wanted didn't happen. I just kind of want to take the movie at face value, which is like a cop-out answer to this question. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I <sighs> There's nothing really huge that I want other than all the OG spot. You know what? Emo Peter Parker, give it to me. Emo Peter. Oh, okay. It won't okay. happen, but if it does, I'll be super happy. And if it doesn't, I won't okay. be disappointed. That's okay. what I want. Here are a couple things that I think would be neat, but don't have to happen. I, I'm not like banking my like of this movie on these things happening by any means. It would be really neat to when something's happening in the multiverse where they're seeing different things or flashing to things that we have one brief look at mutants. At X Men, I think you might get that as a, a Hugh Jackman as a uh, uh, post credit scene. Something that's Something what like I think. That. That's where I think you'll get that. Um, I'd like to see. Uh, not, this is again it's things that don't have these could be very minor Easter eggs, even or quick flashes. They don't have to be major story points. Uh, let's see, um, Deadpool mm. be potentially another one that could happen in there. This is aside from having Toby and Andrew. In this, that's that's one thing that it's just I expect that. Like, now. okay, I was gonna say, do you think it's gonna happen? Yes. Like, I hundred percent think it's gonna. Uh, happen. Okay, I was gonna say how many percent? A hundred percent. I hundred percent think something's gonna happen, even if it's brief. It could be very, very brief. Do you think Emma Stone's gonna be in it? No. Damn. I know. Hmm. Now we might get a Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, has she been Angel in anything recently? She's been in a couple of things, but nothing major, I don't think. So those are a couple of things that I'd like to see in terms of moving the MCU forward. Um, there could also be a tie-in to not Doctor Strange, but a tie-in to Ant-Man, Quantum Mania. Mm-hmm. When is that, that supposed to come out? Next year. They finished filming. That's not even coming out until next year. Like 2023 then? Actually, actually, sorry. I think that's like, tw- yeah, spring 2023. Oh sorry. God. Or winter 2023. 
So I a long, long, long time away. I know it's a long time away. Scheduled to be released, yeah, July 28th, 2023. Yeah, so it's going to take a year and a half of editing, basically, <laughs> to get cool. that done. So where we'll see more of Kang, obviously, too. Great. So yeah, that's what I'd like to see. It'd be cool to see something of mutants and Deadpool and just little flashes like that. Uh, okay, this one comes from Chris. There's a few questions in here. Mm-hmm. Which California team do you think is the best of the three at season's end? And who do you think is going to be Nashville's biggest competition for the last playoff spot? One of the Cali teams, Dallas, who do you think the Blackhawks turned it around? Also, do you think after recovering from COVID, the Islanders can fight back in the playoff spot? So answer the second question first, but do you think the Islanders stand a chance to get into the wild card or even further? They do stand a chance. I think so as well. I, I just think because the Flyers are in so much turmoil, the Devils are the New Jersey Devils. They're treading water right now. Uh, the Blue Jackets are going to be streaky all year long. I think the Caps are for real. The Rangers are for real. The Hurricanes are for real. And honestly, I think the Penguins are for real too. It's just the rest of these teams. I, I think the Islanders have the best chance. And I know I spent the first beginning part of this show just slagging on them completely. But if they can figure it out and not have COVID, they're the <laughs> best team on paper, I think. Uh, the Jackets are doing well because every week someone new steps up and starts doing well. This week it's Bolfquist. This guy is just, he's second in the league in expected goals per game as a defenseman next to Kel McCarr. Like, that's huge because he's had a gigantic week. The Devils are, eh. Dawson Mercer stepped up and has looked fantastic. Uh, the Flyers, <laughs> yeah, my future's bet for them to win the Cup's not looking really good. <laughs> and then the Islanders, I think, can turn it around. They have good, proven goaltending. It's just Varley has to figure it out. And then Anders Lee needs to score goals, Wallstrom needs to contribute, and Barcel needs to take his game up half a notch. All right, so in looking at the California teams, I think the one that is going to be battling is going to be Anaheim just given their young players that are have stepped it up, obviously, like in Troy Terry. Is it Zegris or Zegris? Zegris. Zegris, Zegris is, like, I, I mean, I Milano love, even. Milano's yeah, Sonny been Milano's reborn. been awesome. Um, but Trevor Zegris started the year off so slow, and I went, well, next year, I guess so. And I wrote him off real quick because he just did not look good. He looked like when he first came into the league. And then he's like, yeah, shut the hell up. Let me play some hockey. And he's been on a tear. Uh, John Gibson has been a great goaltender just on bad teams. Uh, the Ducks are fun to watch, too, which helps a lot. L.A. is my sneaky pick there mm-hmm. just because Jonathan Quick showed flashes of Vesna Jonathan Quick and then quickly disappeared again. But Anaheim, <laughs> like, if I were to, like, tear it off, Anaheim would get, like, 80% of my vote and then give me 15% towards LA and then 5% for San Jose. I just think San Jose is not that good. Okay. And do you think that the Blackhawks turn it around at all? No. Yeah. I thought, I thought at the beginning of the year, I might stand a chance, but I just don't know. Unless Patrick Kane from this point forward produces at a heart trophy rate, they will mm-hmm. not be good. Yep. Okay. This one comes from Sean. Do you enjoy the Christmas market? So. Sean. What's the Christmas market? So Toronto has a Christmas market every year. They didn't have I it Googled last it. year. Yeah, so Toronto, <laughs> it's it's awesome. Like there's a bunch of small vendors, a bunch of great food. It's a great it's a very nice like couply place to go to. Me and Nick are going with our girlfriends on Thursday to the Christmas market. And Sean was like, Oh, I was gonna invite you to the July Talk concert on Thursday. I was like, Don't don't talk to me. That's <laughs> I, I like I love July Talk, one of my favorite bands, and uh, I can't go. Which is fine, because spending time with loved ones and friends is important. And I don't Mm -hmm, mean that facetiously. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I do enjoy July Talk, but I will enjoy the Christmas market. Because shout out Heirloom Foods. Nick, we are going there immediately. Christian Marin, friend of the show. His brother runs Heirloom Foods. If you're ever in Toronto, go check him out. I'm not sponsored to say any of this. I just promise you, I've driven (laughs) over an hour before to go eat their food, and I will do it again. But yes, I enjoy the Christmas market. It's very nice. All right. That, that's good to know. You would that's enjoy it. You would enjoy it. Oh, I'm sure I would. I love Christmas. Yes. Sure. Would. I mean, we. so I tweeted out that my video of my tree, and I've been trying to find a topper for my geek Christmas tree. I really, really, Ooh. really, really want the Death Star one from Hallmark. It's just it retails for $134. Death Star tree topper. It sure does. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's quick Google, so wasn't it? cool, though. Like, it lights up. Lights up, has, it has music and sounds and everything, too. Is the, uh, like, lightsaber handle the remote? I'm not sure on that part. That looks cool. But I do have a little um, Rebel X-Wing pilot ornament that if you press the button, it has different lines from Luke Skywalker and A New Hope, which is this pretty is cool. So much money for a tree um, topper. It is. So to hold me over until I can afford that, I have on from Etsy. Etsy's a great place to I find I love stuff. Etsy. I love Etsy. Of all the creative people on there, but I have a 3D printed Rebel Legion logo tree topper heading my direction. That's pretty cool. You'll have which to, be pretty cool. You're gonna. I was gonna say you'll have to tweet it out, but I know you will. So oh, absolutely, I'll absolutely. See it then. So yeah, yeah, I love Christmas markets. I stuff, would so. tell you more about things I bought on Etsy, but I will ruin Christmas for people, so I cannot. I was about to do the same. I was like, wow, can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this one comes from Daniel, and I save this one for last for obvious reasons because mm-hmm. it should be a good one. What is the biggest bombshell moment you've ever had while covering hockey? <laughs> I think you know mine. But you need to talk about it. <laughs> Do I really need to talk about Tim Peel again? <laughs> well, just remind people All that right. might be new. Okay, so if you heard about Tim Peel getting fired, long story short, oops. Um, I was just working at Sportsnet. Tim Peel? <laughs> I was working at He's doing fine now. He's got a podcast. He's retired from right. the NHL. He has a pension. He's completely fine. You're welcome, Tim. Send me a fruit basket. Um... <laughs> I was working a sports net shift and this is when we were at our former place of employment when we did another podcast and I was watching the Preds game like very diligently mm-hmm. and I was like wow <clears throat> we're talking about makeup calls on the air that's pretty bold and I was like wait 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 that wasn't the play by player color I was like that that must have been a referee so I was like I'm just going to tweet this out and I end up tweeting it out and looking at it right now it has 1.6 million views on Twitter. Oh boy. 3.9k retweets, 8.8k oh likes, 591 replies. It was on Spit and Chicklets, it was embed on Bleacher Report, Sports Illustrated. Uh, ESPN picked up my tweet as well. Yahoo picked up my tweet. The score picked up my tweet. My place of employment, Sportsnet, did not pick up my tweet. They uh we didn't see eye to eye for a little bit is the nicest way to put it without jeopardizing my employment right now. Um, but because I'm a freelancer, <laughs> I can pretty much do what I want. Um, but yeah, long story short is Tim Peel got caught on a hot mic saying that he gave a makeup call. And let me tell you, going viral sucks. The shit storm that ensues of like just corporate jargon that gets shoved down my throat was terrible. I had some people like, threaten me because they were like you're ruining the game blah 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 uh taylor luan for uh, replied to me too and i thought that was cool and he was saying i thought the nfl refs were bad it was interesting like one of my goals working (laughs) in sports was always to be like i want to break a piece of news one day like be bob mckenzie and be like this guy is signing here and then have that picked up i guess this counts as breaking news um it's just, uh, I didn't feel bad getting him fired, which makes me sound like a horrible person. No, not don't. But I just think if you're going to make the game better, you got to get rid of makeup calls. Or if you're going to do something sneaky, don't get caught. Just don't. <laughs> like, if you know you have the mic on you, don't trust Fred in the sound truck to have your mic off as soon as the whistle goes. Don't trust that. The one thing I was taught in broadcasting school always was if you have a mic on you, pretend it's always on. And it's the best advice that's ever been given to me. Because whenever there's a mic in front of me and I'm just sitting here, I don't say vile shit into it. Because I don't know if I'm somehow still on a Zoom call, if I'm still on a Teams meeting. You never know what's happening. It's not to say I say vile shit all the time, but... I don't feel bad. People, I think that's the number one question that people have always asked me about this Tim Peel thing other than, ha ha ha, what, like, did you enjoy it kind of thing. I I don't think I enjoyed it, but I definitely don't feel bad. Right. Yeah, so that was mine. <laughs> what a fun time 2021 was. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so you I mean you obviously have me beat here. <laughs> it's not a competition. I know. <laughs> But I mean, for me, it's a different. I guess it's a different type of bombshell moments. Um, there are. A, let me let me talk about a couple here. There was one that actually just appeared in my Facebook memories, and it was when. <laughs> uh, so before, and sometimes I still do, in terms of the media assignment sheet for the press box, we have our chair assignments and everything. They would put the names of the scouts that were there the pro scouts and the teams are represented <laughs> a few years ago i simply this is this is obviously when people were talking about potential trades the preds could have things like that things were heating up already because of the time of year that it was when you start getting closer to january right things start happening if the teams are performing well or whatnot and there was already trade talk about colin wilson i tweeted out the set number of scouts that were there the teams mm -hmm. buffalo was one of them mm -hmm. but it's just teams like the scouts present for tonight's game are as follows mm -hmm. read into it what you will that's it because pro scouts are in every game they're, they're there i mean a lot of pro scouts live in the city that they cover and they just work for the other team like jim mckenzie former national Predator jim mckenzie is a scout he lives in natural but he goes in scouts for his team that, that he works for so this Buffalo Sabres page on Facebook, I guess, saw my tweet and took it as me saying oh. that the Buffalo Sabres are close to trading for Colin Wilson per insider Justin Bradford. Insider Justin. I like that as a ring to it. So if you ever see people saying insider to me based on those you know awful tweets before the, the hockey insider from years ago it was them making fun of that that specific thing i even went on the page and commented i was like that is not what i said here's exactly what i said and people were people i mean it's buffalo people were freaking out people were freaking the f out over this thinking that oh the sabers are going to trade for colin wilson and i never said it like, they took this and completely misconstrued what I tweeted uh -huh. and said that I was an insider and reported this. So that went nice and viral. Uh, another time was when, of all things, so there is a former Preds captain who is married to a superstar vocalist. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Mike yeah. Fisher. Okay. I thought you weren't just going to say his name. I was no. like, is this he no. who shall not no, no, be named? No, no, no. Mike Fisher and Carrie Underwood. Mm-hmm. They were expecting a baby. I was in Huntsville covering University of Alabama and Huntsville Chargers college hockey. And I see from a source that Carrie had the baby. <laughs> this started the news of me somehow being baby breaker Bradford. Baby breaker <laughs> insider. Oh, that so sounds awful. I tweet, I oh, God. I tweeted out that National Predators, um, Mike Fisher, has... And, and his wife have acquired a first round pick. Like, trying to make it a little cutesy and funny. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah. trying to like break the news like that because I figured somebody else might have potentially. Well, that tweet went pretty viral. Went so viral that if you're not aware how rabid fans can be of musical artists, um, they can be. I'm thinking, think One Direction, think like Harry Styles, think Jonas Brothers, Carrie Underwood, how f big time mega fans, especially those that re that that receive a lot of teenager attention, uh -huh. where it's like, can like be a very emotional in terms of how they follow. Yeah. And it's, that's normal. That's normal at that age. I totally get it. We, we've all been in those places. Maybe not as much, but we get that whether it's with sports or music or whatnot. I received death threats on Twitter. Oh. Oh. I had to block so many Carrie fans, and then a couple of them apologized later because they're like, "Are you joking? If you're joking, like I would, I don't joke. I don't tweet out fake things. I'm not a jokester when it comes to that." Uh huh. Like my Twitter was blowing up for hours, bro, hours, days until it finally because they didn't break the news until three days later. <laughs> it became actually public, and I received so many apology tweets from Carrie Wood fans. Some of them still follow me to this day, even well, though Mike's nice. not playing for the yeah playing for the team. Some of them are growing up. And I actually communicate with some of them. Adults. On, 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 yeah, they've grown up, gone to college and everything. It's, that's how long ago it was when you think about it. So, since Isaiah was born. But 
I received death threats. That's death threats. A bit much for a baby thing. Yeah. What do you like? Uh, was that the? This is gonna get dark. Is that the first time you've had death threats on the internet? No. Okay. If his I've had it like spottedly throughout my tenure on the interwebs but mm -hmm. when i did that uh tim peel thing a lot of people wanted to murder me like straight up just wanted to kill me and i was like you love tim peel this much that much I like what, what i remember this was when i was first starting in radio and it was just because of some tweets from a really someone some of them was not right in his head mm -hmm. threatened to put me in me and jordan tutu in a body bag <laughs> what? So, so my friends, I don't even remember what what spiked it, but I mean, he the guy was obviously triggered because it was just people shit talking, yeah, on Twitter, and he threatened that. And so I have a couple, you know, really good uh, mystery fans or friends, sorry, not fans, that were able to go find his place of employment, and his mom screenshot this. The guy was like in his thirties, but still sent screenshots to his. This was before all this stuff could go on, you know, yeah, where yeah, people yeah. could cancel each other. So he's just a loser. It was just a loser. Yeah. Uh, and so sent it to his mom <laughs> and his place of employment the screenshots. Like it's one thing to be threatening people to put him in a body bag. Yeah, no, that's awful, for so. lack of a better term. I'm terrified. Like, I would I guess I'm gonna hold that as my new mantra. It's like don't say stupid shit on the internet that you wouldn't want your mother to see. Or your employer even really. Yeah, I would care. People who use Twitter and have their public or their profiles public Scrub your Twitter before you go to job interviews. When I oh, yeah. was like hiring people back when I was working for WWG, we had a bunch of like just applications come in, and mm -hmm. I'd just go to their social media and type in oh, man. horrible words plus their handle, and I was like, no, 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 oh, no, boy. no, no, no. Like, oh, people are dumb. Um, so you know how you were no, talking about? Oh, go ahead. You know? Oh no, no, no! I was gonna transition off, so you oh, continue. Just real quick, real quick. The bombshell moment, though, that is able to cover. So just those are two bombs that I, that I was involved in. What is able to cover was the Weber Subban trade. So, and the reason I say this is because I was covering the draft, um. and so you got to think that unless you were at the draft then you weren't like there covering everything that was actually happening in the moment where the general managers were mm -hmm. like that is literal boots on the ground. Can sorry, that sorry, not time. Weber Subban, the Subban trade period. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Weber Subban happened after the, after the draft, mm -hmm. but um, sorry. Yes. The Subban trade, which actually broke pretty big there because I was in Vancouver. I remember and this broke because it was one of those things the Predators were still doing okay and they had to, they knew they had to dump cap, but it was one of those things. PK Subban was a superstar. Mm -hmm. Because just his name, his personality, everything like that. But the mo the reason why I say this because it was so fun. I was running a little bit late due to the train being a little bit, uh, getting behind on that and try to take that from the suburbs all the way into downtown Vancouver. I walk in and... I had not even had a chance to check my phone yet from just jumping off the train and going straight into the arena. I walk past Sean Shapiro of The Athletic. He's like, hey, buddy, check your phone. You have work to do. And I was like, what? Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> like, b breaking right then to where, I remember after the draft finished, David Pohl had his availability. Mm -hmm. And it's basically David Pohl there just kind of sitting there laughing. And... Pierre Lebrun making jokes about what the cap was going to be. <laughs> I mean, but those are the moments you only get if you're there, right? Like 100%. If you're not there, you're not getting those in, those actual moments. So that was the bomb to moment that was fun to cover because it happened on draft day. And unless you were at the draft, which not very many people from Nashville go to cover the draft, uh, unless there's like a high first round pick, which hardly ever happens, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> then you were there in that moment. And that was fun to be in that moment, all the media clamoring around of why this happened, why this happened. And seeing him have to dodge around the question of why it actually happened. Yeah, that's the, that's like bucket list things I want to cover. Like a trade like that and be there for yeah. the things that no one really knows about. Like that is, that's so, there for me. Because I love sharing stories like this because I know our listeners appreciate it. So the Subban Weber trade though, uh, that obviously happened and everybody was in Nashville. But these are the moments that stand out. 
So, so we're having we're gonna have a call with, with PK Subban, and you had to come to the arena to go into the big conference room in the arena to be there for it. And I, I, I remember my buddy Daniel Lavender, who's at Admiral's Roundtable, was in Milwaukee, uh, was there and visiting. He's visiting town for the Preds prospects game. And because he covers the, he covered the Admirals, so he's there to see the prospects. Well, we're all sitting in this room. There's like probably 15 media members, which is a lot for Nashville, uh, in this room. And the way you had to do it is the conference call.com or go to me whatever the conference call mm-hmm. line was the predators were using at the time and they had a bunch of people that weren't on mute one of them being a french canadian radio station rds i don't recall which one it was because all we could hear were commercials being played i would in bet french. i would bet it's rds and it's loud rds because the the conference call was on hold Mm -hmm. and everybody's sitting there going "Uh uh-oh uh-oh and then you hear some other french folks talking trying to tell them to turn this off and the preds pr was even like hello could you please mute yourself so we can get this conference call started multiple times then finally and you can imagine the reaction from people finally preds pr went Okay, sorry everyone. We're gonna do this conference call. Only people here in the room since they can't figure out mute. Click. That's incredible. Bye bye everybody. I don't get how people don't know how to mute their shit or know their shit's so, not muted. Here's the thing: before he went click, all you heard was no, 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 no. Click. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good French accent or impression. <sighs> Dude, it was one of those things where everybody's just like, "Holy shit, they did that." Good. Like, especially PK Subban. You know how many French outlets were on mm-hmm. that conference call and then all of a sudden got screwed out of the conference call because one station couldn't figure it out. And like to put that into perspective, that delays the process of getting that information out to their media mm-hmm. by hours. Because the conference call took how long? An hour, let's say? I mean, 15 minutes. You know, oh, I thought it was going to be PK. longer. And then no, just, I mean, he was in Europe at the time. <laughs> yeah, so double it, has to get back to them, and then they have to go through it, and there's no transcript immediately available. Mm-hmm. So that whole process for 15 minutes, instead of it just being a turn and burn, is like mm-hmm. an extra hour, hour and a half. Because they could just could not just mute themselves. Shut the hell up, yeah. <laughs> but I'll never forget that, because we're just, oh, whoa, to think that one of the biggest trades... Not just in Predators history, but in hockey history. That's a pretty damn big trade, a one-for-one one like that. That's a one-for-one one superstar trade, yeah. And only people in the room were able to be a part of it. <laughs> it's a boss move by whoever clicked the hang-up button. It was. We were just like, all right, because it was annoying. It was super annoying. Being yeah, it's the worst. By French commercials. <laughs> Pourquoi? <laughs> Parce que... <laughs> Pourquoi le singe, ma stance le rue? Ah, on veut la banane. We. Oui. That's all I'll give you after that. I can't wait to go to the draft in Montreal. Me neither, man. It's I'm gonna excited. be fun. Um, before we get out of here, I want to show mm-hmm. you my most recent purchase. Ooh, ooh, show and tell with Matt. Mm-hmm. Hold on. <laughs> yes. I had to buy yes. the Tim Beebs hat. The Tim Beebs hat. Did you, did you try the Tim Beebs though too? Oh yeah, I bought a ten pack and ate them promptly. Were they good? They're okay. Okay, explain to everybody first what Tim Beebs are, and then explain the flavor. Okay, so Tim Hortons has Tim Bits, which are just donut holes, and oh. then Justin Bieber was like, "I'm gonna make my own," but really it was Tim Hortons going, "We're gonna give you a butt ton of money to have your own Tim Bits," and so he just kind of upgraded three existing flavors. Uh, okay. birthday cake is really damn good to just begin with. And he made mm-hmm. like a birthday cake waffle one. And so that one is top notch for me because birthday cake's my favorite. The sour cream glazed one, he added, you, you, you. He just added chocolate chips to it. Oh man. So the consistency is the problem with that one because some oh, of them no. had a few chocolate chips. Some of them had oh, too no. many. And then like the one out of four was just right. Um, the white fudge chocolate dip one tastes the exact same as a chocolate dip one. And if you think otherwise, you're wrong. Um, then I bought this toque, which cost 
too much money, to be quite honest. How much Canadian did you pay for that? So I'm going to tell you right now, you rip the logo off and you've ripped the other logo off. Um, this toque and its materials are worth no more than like two bucks at the dollar store. I paid $30 for this. Oh my God, Matthew. But I also bought another one that's still in its bag. Because so you can sell it later. You can't get it in America. Dude, you're going to have like fans. I want to put it clamoring. on eBay when everyone calms down on eBay. Because you can get like the tote bag, the fanny pack, and the hat combo for like, oh, and a, in a, in a box too, like the Timbit box. All this merch? All this merch is for sale? Yeah, yeah. I did yeah. not realize it was that big of a yeah, thing. Yeah, it's crazy. It was just the thing in the hat. It's awesome. Uh, the fanny pack I'll never wear, the tote bag I'll never wear, but people are selling like that whole bundle for like two, three hundred dollars. So the hat's gonna pay for itself. Hundred percent. But I might just keep it. Okay. Why not? I'm actually also going to wear this hat all winter because it fits my fat head, and it's <laughs> hilarious. So this is what I'll actually wear to the Christmas market, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Tim Biebs, the stupidest thing I've spent money on lately. There's a lot of Christmas presents that I've bought that I can't talk about on the podcast until after Christmas. That's fair. So we'll talk about that, too. It's a lot. Okay. There's a lot. There's okay. A lot. All right. Well, folks, we thank you so much for participating and just giving us some questions to answer and some topics. We really appreciate it. That was a lot of fun. That, we I love, love episodes like this. Love episodes like this because we can talk about so many different things and keep it around hockey still, too, but also what the things that we enjoy and the things that we love. Uh, for reference... If you don't know what we were talking about, we mentioned a parole type parole <laughs> on Google parole Philippines. It is a type of Christmas decoration, which you will see in one of the Disney shorts that is available on Disney plus as well. It is something that is very heartfelt for the Filipino tradition around Christmas as well. So highly recommend you see that there's so many different types of puddles out there too. So go check that out. They're very unique. You can get them on Etsy if you're interested in it. And we'd be more than happy to share our Filipino culture with you. Add the word Christmas to your search, too. Because if oh, you yeah, just type in that. parole Philippines like I just did, there's oh, like geez. a prisoner may be granted parole. Whenever the board finds that there is a reasonable probability that if released, he'll okay. be law-abiding. Okay. And one day we should go over Filipino law because there's some crazy laws, man. Oh, God. Okay. Another time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's it's... at Best of Matt. At Triple B Podcast underscore. Uh, you make sure you're subscribed on Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And I'm at Just B Bradford. We'll talk to you next time on Triple P Podcast, Breads, Bucks, Pinoys. Bye. Bye.